Thanks. Um, hi, I'm Andrew, and this is joint work with Takaru and Ian. And I'll be uh, talking about how we can use adversarial training uh, for text. So you can see that I didn't mention text generation because um, that's a bit hard, as many of you know. So adversarial examples was covered um, about three spotlight um, presentations ago. Um, so basically, we have um, uh, something that looks like noise to humans, but causes the um, classifier to misclassify. So in this case, a panda becomes a gibbon by adding this small quantity of um, random looking noise. So training with this objective makes the model uh, resistant to these adversarial examples, but in the image case, it often doesn't help the model uh, generalize on real data, the data that we uh, usually care about. Um, so I'll be covering adversarial training and virtual adversarial training uh, by Miyato, which is the semi-supervised case. So um, for text, <clears throat> typically the problem here is that the sequence, well first, the problem is a sequence, and then um, secondly, the sequence is discrete. Um, so of course, this causes problems with gradients, so we get around that by operating on the word embeddings. And we now define the perturbation on the word embedding rather than going back to the original discrete input space. And that gets around a lot of issues. And this is also possible because we aren't using these examples as any kind of attack. So this is not an attack-based um, problem. So what's the motivation for this? Well, in the text domain, we have a lot of unlabeled examples. We basically have the entire web. Um, also, in the supervised case, um, overfitting happens extremely frequently with um, large data sets and with large models. So the problems with using larger models is that the embedding space gets bigger, and then of course, as your embedding space gets bigger, it becomes an order of magnitude greater than the number of parameters you have in your model. And so uh, we want to use this as a regularizer to improve text models in general. Uh, so we apply these techniques to uh, text classification in this instance, and we get state-of-the-art performance on several public uh, text datasets. So this is what the model looks like. We use a unidirectional LSTM. Um, so if, first, if you ignore this R, we map each word into an embedding, V, and then we pass this into the LSTM at every time step. We then take the hidden state at the final time step and pass that into our classifier, which is usually a logistic layer or a softmax layer. Uh, the modification to this is the R's that we add here. So in the case of adversarial training, um, these, these R's are continuous vectors, perturbations on the embedding space, and, and they are derived from taking the gradient of the loss with respect to the input embedding uh, to create uh, misclassification. In the case of virtual adversarial training, we basically want an adversary here. Uh, we don't know the true label Y, and so we want an adversary to change the distribution over labels. Um, and we go into detail for that uh, in the paper. Uh, so this is what the learning curves look like on the test set. Um, so you can see with the baseline, without adversarial training, overfitting happens very quickly. Um, with adversarial training and with virtual adversarial training, um, overfitting is much less likely. And then these are our results um, on IMDB, which is movie review classification. The baseline is uh, from our work last year, which is um, pre-training LSTM as a language model and then doing classification. And with the virtual adversarial method, uh, we get improvement that um, is on par with the state of the art. Uh, for other data sets, such as uh, these text data sets, RCV1 and LEC, um, we get similar results. Um, again, beating the state of the art, the CNNs and uh, bi bi-directional LSTMs in this case. And also for DBpedia, uh, we beat character level and word level models, um, and models such as fast text. Uh, finally, um, here are some what the newest labels look like before and after our regularization method. So you can see for good, um, bad is a really close nearest neighbor, which, you, which is something you don't really want in a supervised um, sentiment analysis system. 
Um, so after applying the, our objective, um, bad goes away. Uh, so finally, um, we've introduced uh, ways of using adversarial and virtual adversarial objectives on text classification and show that they are effective regularizers. Um, and by just tuning one additional hyperparameter, which is the norm of the adversarial perturbation, we can get state of the art performance. So, any questions? We are a bit over time, so perhaps we can delay the questions and thank the speaker. So actually that 